Hi, this is John with Fix It Planet. Today we're going to take a look at this Xbox controller. I think this port is bad. Got a bad connection there at that port and the controller is not recognized by the console. It's a controller for the Xbox One. Model 1708. There are these little covers on each side, little side panels on each side of the, on each handle. Uh, they just snap off. They are a little stubborn and takes a little bit of force to get them to, to snap off, but they do just snap in and out. You can just see that first screw exposed. The screws are hidden underneath. Now these are T8 security torque screws. So we will be using a T8 security torx screwdriver bit. So I haven't been uploading in the last few weeks because I've been on vacation and we've been very busy uh, before and after vacation. And um, so we've got a couple of videos here, this one, and I've got another one um, that needs to be finished. And it is the, it's going to be kind of interesting. It's got a uh, control cluster, instrument cluster for uh think a Ford pickup or some type of pickup. I'm going to do a little bit of research on this particular uh, modification some people seem to be doing and uh, get that video together and um, so that one's in the works. Now the front panel on this thing is not ready to come off yet so we still have a hidden screw somewhere. Where could it be hiding? Nope, it's not there. So it is underneath this uh, sticker right here in the middle. We're not going to bother peeling the sticker off. We're just going to cut a little hole out right there so the screw will come out. Same type of screw. So we have five identical screws, and now the front plate will come off. And the rear will come off as well, that rear cover. Now we've exposed the USB port. We can actually conveniently get access to it now without having to take the rest of the controller apart. So we can definitely see these pins are lifted up and loose. So this is a fairly typical repair. We get lots of these kinds of things. All sorts of devices use that particular connector. So you can see those are definitely loose. Those pins, is five pins, and all of them are loose. 
and there's a couple that have lifted the pads. That uh, third one from the left, right in the middle there, that one's going to need a jumper right there, that one. We'll have to put a jumper on that. So we'll expose some of the copper on the trace where it picks up on the other side. Since that is missing, in between there, there's no way to make a little bridge uh, or to, to make the solder connect. So we're going to make a little bridge with uh, a wire. These two are close enough. Uh, they're just broken. So we'll just be able to add a good amount of solder on these and they'll be fine. The other two can solder down nicely. This one is the one we'll be concentrating on with our jumper wire. So that center pin that you can see there where it won't quite make it over to the trace, we need to bridge that gap and we're going to use a tiny piece of wire. Make a little jumper and bridge that gap. I'm having a little bit of trouble because the controller keeps moving on me and I can't can't get just stable enough to to get that wire on so I'm going to have to reposition myself and we'll use a pair of tweezers to give us a little hand. Holding that wire. So I was real busy uh, in the lead up to going on vacation and I just didn't have time to, to uh, shoot any videos or upload anything. And then of course when I got back from vacation, kind of the same thing, trying to get um, ramped back up again. Uh, so we've been back for a little bit now and um, starting to, to kind of settle back in. So we've got the uh, wire tacked on to the pin. We just need to tack it on to the, the trace on the other side and then make sure there's a, a good amount of solder on there so it'll be rock solid. There we go, that's perfect. Beautiful. That's a nice and solid joint. That should hold very well.
So we'll put this little plastic cover back on. Now that we've got that port fixed, put this thing back together and give it a test. So we can really definitely see that those pins are nice and rock solid. Shouldn't have any problem now recognizing that controller. So we're going to put the front face plate back on and the rear cover. We'll go ahead and put that center screw in first. And that'll hold the front and back on for us while we get the other four screws in. Alright, now this machine's got this white controller on here that uh, we're going to use to get it prompted up and ready. Now I don't have a friend here today to help me in put this, connect this cable up to the controller. So that's going to mess my camera shot up. Uh, let's see, I've got one hand. How can I put this in there? So I should have probably thought this one through a little bit better before I <laughs> shot this video. I should have had this little part, uh, had the phone on a, a, a stand or something. So I don't have any friend here today. I'm friendless. So the camera's going to get all messed up here. Sorry. try to hold that with one hand while I plug it in with the other yeah okay this is why it really helps if you have a friend nearby sometimes you just need a friend So it says your controller needs an update. So that's a pretty good indication that it has detected the controller. And obviously we are pushing some buttons to advance through to have this thing updated. So it looks like we have solved our problem, but we'll go ahead and do the update and make sure that it does communicate with the controller. can see the activity line is is going
the connected controller has been updated. So there you go. We have solved uh, the problem. The controller is recognized and working properly again using the Xbox. So hopefully you found this uh, video interesting or useful. And if you did, I appreciate it. If you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.